So today we're going to talk about papers and writing. And this isn't a usual topic in a graduate course, but I realize that it isn't taught in a lot of places and it's just kind of stuff you're supposed to know. And I want my students who take this course to know this sort of thing. And because this is a course about language and how computers can understand language, I think that it's particularly embarrassing if we, as people working on computational linguistics and natural language processing, can't string a couple of words together to create a coherent paper. So I think it fits in this course. And what I'm going to talk about is how you can be an effective writer in the area of computational linguistics and natural language processing. And I'm going to split this into three parts. So first I want to talk about the mechanics of writing a scholarly paper in our field. And this is going to be a lot of nuts and bolts stuff, but these are a lot of things that I see students not learning or getting wrong quite often. And I want to talk about that just so that uh, you can be aware of it and hopefully have a leg up and learn about more important stuff. And I also want to talk about the importance of writing well, focusing on writing to the different audiences that can read the sorts of things that you're writing. And finally, I'm not going to talk about writing per se, but what it means to be an effective reviewer. And understanding the process of reviewing is good for you writing a paper, in that you can hopefully have a higher probability of having your paper accepted, but also so that you can be an effective reviewer and help other people uh, create well-crafted ideas. And I want to add a disclaimer, a lot of what I'm going to say today is my opinion, and that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily right, and you can definitely disagree with me, and I'd, I'd love to have that discussion. So the first thing that I want to say is that when you write a paper, you should use LaTeX. And LaTeX was created by Don Knuth, an emeritus professor at Stanford University, who wanted to write a series of books about computer science and realized that he couldn't, the software to write those books didn't exist, and so he had to make it himself, and uh, that was tech, that was later extended into law tech, uh, which is the de facto method of creating scholarly publications. And the reason that you should use law tech is that it's very effective for creating equations, you can typeset math very beautifully, it also saves you time. Most journals and most conferences provide templates in LaTeX, and as usually happens, your paper will get rejected from one conference, you need to reformat it for a different conference, and that's basically just swapping out these template files, and you can focus on improving your writing and not spend a bunch of time fiddling with formatting, making sure the headings look right, and, and everything else. LaTeX abstracts that out so that you don't have to worry about it. A pragmatic reason to use LaTeX is that it's free, it's open source, anyone can use the code, anyone can extend it, you don't have to pay to use LaTeX interpreters or compilers, and this is important especially for people in uh, the developing world, where their universities don't provide them with Word for free. And this allows you to collaborate more freely with everyone in the world. And that, I think, is an important goal of science. And another egalitarian reason that you should prefer to use LaTeX is that for blind people, it's much easier for them to read LaTeX source code than to read a PDF or a Microsoft Word document. LaTeX encodes mathematics in a way that screen readers can deal with. And the blind students that I've worked with much prefer having the LaTeX source than looking at a PDF or looking at a Word document. All that being said, this is not a LaTeX tutorial. Most people figure out how to use LaTeX just fine. They can produce documents. What I'm going to talk about are some of the common errors, even once you figure out how to do the basics of LaTeX, 
that persist and, and make your documents look a little less professional than people who have been using LaTeX for a long time and know kind of the, the silly little secrets that give away how experienced you are with LaTeX. And although LaTeX is great, it's not very user friendly, and so you need to be apprenticed to some LaTeX master to learn a lot of these tips. And I'm not going to talk about all of them today, there are a lot more on my webpage where I compile a list of stuff for students to use as resources as they're becoming more proficient at writing. So what are the, some of the common mistakes that people make in LaTeX? So first, many people position footnotes incorrectly. And so one of the great things about LaTeX is that you can very easily insert footnotes and footnotes always go after punctuation at the end of the sentence. And so you shouldn't have the period of a sentence after the footnote. Another problem that people have is using dashes, hyphens, and m dashes incorrectly. So if you have two words, if you have two words that you're joining together with a hyphen, you do it like so. One dash. You hit the hyphen button on your keyboard once. And similarly, if you're typing my name, Boyd Graber, one hyphen in there. If you're giving a range of numbers, you have two hyphens. And so, between the years 1980 and 1983, two hyphens. Pages 78 to 101, two hyphens. And also notice that just like the hyphen connecting two words together, if you have an in dash, that this is called, because it's the same width as an in, you don't have spaces around that. And if you're using an m dash here, called an m dash because it's the same width as an m, which is used to set off clauses, which it never is, that also has no spaces around the dash, but it has three hyphens. So this is something that many people get wrong. It just requires you to uh, remember the difference between hyphens, in dashes, and m dashes. Another thing that people often get wrong in LaTeX are quotes. And so the left and right quotes in LaTeX are differentiated. And you don't use the same character for both. You have a two characters. You type the keyboard twice to get the left quotes and the right quotes. And on US keyboards, the single left quote is uh, at the top left of the keyboard, and uh, the single right quote is in the middle on the right hand side of the keyboard. So those are two separate characters, and the two directions are different. If you use the standard quote, which is a single character, uh, it will look okay, but it won't be right in LaTeX. Another problem that I often see in LaTeX is in math. And so you need to be careful when you're typing mathematical equations. Some things require space around them. So for example, the given sign in a probability shouldn't just be the pipe. You need to put space on the left and the right of it so that it doesn't look squished. And likewise, LaTeX has nice parentheses that get bigger or smaller depending on the stuff inside of it. And it's important to use these correctly. So you have left parenthesis, and so this is one command, and right parentheses. And if you just use the single character for the left or right parentheses, it will look tiny and not match a big expression like what's inside here. Like I said before, I have a lot more of these things on my style page, but these are the most common. You can check out those links and see what other LaTeX tips I have there. Images and figures are also very important, and I'll talk more about why they're important from sort of a pragmatic perspective. But when you create a figure, whenever possible, use vector graphics. Vector graphics are when you describe an image based on curves and equations. You say, I have a line that tilts at this kind of angle, and so that, that's over here 
uh, if you're drawing an E using Bezier curves and, and things like that. Raster images are when you divide an image into pixels and you describe what pixels have what colors. And this looks okay if your image isn't too big. But if you zoom in, you start to see the grid, or the raster. That's why it's called a raster graphics. And then, if, if, if it gets too big, the image doesn't look so great. And the thing about documents is that many times people will zoom in. They'll want to look at your figures more carefully, or they'll want to put it in a slide. And if you don't use Vector graphics, when they zoom in, it'll look bad. And uh, sometimes when you go off and print the document, even if it looks okay on a screen, sometimes raster graphics will look really bad on a printer. So it helps you look a little bit more professional to use vector graphics whenever possible. And so use programs like uh, Illustrator, OmniGraphle, or uh, Inkscape to create vector graphics that you can insert in your documents. And create graphs whenever possible. They're usually easier to interpret than tables. You get a uh, quick impression and it's, it's more efficient. Whenever you have figures, whether it be table or graphics or charts, use effective captions. Explain what's going on, what's the takeaway of this figure. Don't just say, this is accuracy versus time. Explain why the reader should care about that. And in your tables, don't use vertical lines. Only use horizontal lines and use them sparingly. Again, I have more about this on my style page. So I've been talking about using LaTeX, and one of the corollaries of using LaTeX is that Often you'll create these LaTeX documents collaboratively. You'll be working with a team. And how do you manage that? When I work collaboratively on a LaTeX paper, I like to use version control. And as you use version control, you should do the following things. Version control has a lot of nice features. It helps you collaborate even asynchronously. So something like Dropbox doesn't let you do that. It gives you an implicit backup, so all of your stuff remains backed up, and you can go back in time. What was I doing on uh, Saturday? Uh, let's go back to that version. And it's not reliant on the cloud. You can work on airplanes. If the internet goes down, people can still keep working. But if you're using version control, you have to do the following things to make the collaboration easy. You need to split a big document into smaller documents, and LaTeX makes it easy to do that with the input command. So the input command, you can give another file name, and that just inserts that other LaTeX file into this big document. So I like to have each of the subsections in its own file so that people can say, hey, I'm going to work on this subsection. Uh, let me take the token, as it were, and only and be the only person editing that document. One of the nice things about version control is that if people accidentally modify the same file, it will do as good of a job as it can merging those changes together. But to make sure that that happens in a sane way, uh, you can't have basically all of your text on a single line. Version control merges individual lines, and if only one person has merged each line, no problem. But if multiple people have edited the same line, it won't know how to merge them together. And this results in a conflict. And so the more lines you have, the lower the probability that if two people accidentally edited the same file, that you'll have a conflict. So you should flow your lines so that, for example, after every sentence, you start a new line in your file. And I also like to not have any lines longer than 80 characters. So how do you keep track of who's editing what files? I like to use Google Docs to do that. And so you write down all of the files uh, in your paper, and then uh, each person can write their name next to the file that they're editing, and once they're done editing, they commit their changes into version control, and then other people can view those changes and edit those files after they've released their token, as it were. 
So uh, one question that I often get is, why not use something like Overleaf or Share LaTeX? I've had some bad experiences. The sites are not perfect. Sometimes they go down, and when they go down, especially when a lot of people are using it right before a paper deadline, uh, that's bad news because you don't have your own local backups. And something like uh, version control, you have your own local repository, especially for things like Git, you can keep working even if the internet or one of these sites goes down. And one day, maybe they'll get good enough that I'll trust them again, but uh, not yet. So today we've talked about the mechanics of writing. This can be a little daunting, especially if you haven't used LaTeX a lot, but don't let that hold you up. The most important thing is to write, and it doesn't matter if you're writing in LaTeX or Word or with pen and paper. The ideas and getting them in written form is the most important thing. So if psychologically LaTeX intimidates you, that isn't a problem. Write however makes sense to you. And it doesn't matter where or how. The important thing is to get your thoughts out. That's the first step. And then later you can worry about all of this annoying LaTeX business.